Yeah, spring break is almost over. And I, I mean, the school is literally empty. People have gone to chill. Others have gone to Chicago, Miami, uh, St. Louis. People are chilling. New York and the likes. Even some of my Ghanaian friends are, are out of town. Yeah. Anyway, but I decided to stay and record videos and also watch movies. <laughs> At least this is the time I have to myself. Okay, so um, without talking too much, uh, let me talk about vital documents that you need uh, for your visa interview, F1 visa interview, and then your arrival checklist. The things that you need once you get here, like these are must-haves once you get here. So you want to uh, follow closely and then take note of the very vital documents that I talk about. So um, <clears throat> starting with the things that you need for your visa interview, number one is your passport no two ways you always need your passport number two is your ds160 confirmation page now when you apply for the uh, the visa interview you are given a page and you see ds160 with your photo there um the details the interview appointment number and all that make sure you print that out for me i always print it colored but i don't think it really matters the color just print it out but for me all the interviews that i went i always printed it out as a colored page um i don't think it really matters and then number three is your MRV fee, which is your interview payment receipt. Okay, so you need to pay at, uh, if you're in Ghana, you're paying at GT Bank. I don't know for other countries. I don't know for Nigeria, Kenya, and uh, Rwanda, and the, and the likes. But that is uh, MRV fee. That is machine readable visa fee, which is usually 160 As of 2023, 2022, 2023, it's $160. It used to be way less, but, you know, inflation, catching up with it. So... Uh, 160 make sure you, you pay that and then you have that receipt don't don't get it missing have that receipt and you take it to the interview with you your machine readable visa fee mrv or your interview payment receipt number four is your admission letter from the school the school admitted you they gave you an admission letter which mostly cons uh, consists or contains your stipend how much they're going to be paying you that is if you got funding okay if you got funding they are going to state it in the admission letter that we have, we've given you the position of a teaching assistant or a graduate assistant or a graduate research assistant okay and then you see the stipend maybe ten thousand over five months twenty thousand over one year twenty thousand over two years whatever they've written in there should it, it will all be contained in the admission letter which you would take to the visa interview so if a question arises around your stipend and i mean what is the proof that you have an assistantship you take your admission letter which contains that thing and then you show it to the visa officer uh, makes sense number five you need a bank statement bank statement is financial proof right that uh your sponsor the one making sure you're coming to the u.s is going to take care of your financial needs so you need to show a bank statement and the bank statement i shared in my other video if you are messing out on the very vital information you can check the other video where i spoke about the i-20 financials for international students coming to the u.s so <clears throat> your your bank statement must have um, must have details of the one going to sponsor you okay and it is submitted it is submitted after you've gotten admission so when you get admission and you see your stipend and everything you can now calculate from their website what is your living expenses what is going to be for one year what your tuition <coughs> your tuition amount is for that one year or two years whatever and then you calculate and see how much deficit you have left so that you supply a bank statement with that same amount of deficit that you have. So I can't go into details because I, I did a separate video for that. So look for I-20 financials and then uh, you'll gain more insight over there. Now your bank statement should have a supporting letter as proof. Um, <clears throat> for instance, you say, okay, my uncle is, is going to pay for my fees. He's supporting me. Now, what is the proof that Mr. Mensa is actually your uncle? Yes, you have a bank statement, but the bank statement doesn't say uncle to so so and so on the bank statement. It doesn't say that. So how do I further prove that the one whose bank statement I'm using is actually aware and agrees that he will be supporting me? You need a financial um, support letter. So it's not anything strange. You just need a person to write a letter or you can even write a letter and make the person review it and see whether it makes sense according to what he also, you know, agrees on. And then he can sign it. So simply the person writing a letter to say that, hey, I am the relative of so-and-so. 
and I, I make this amount. This is my job. I am ready to support their school in the United States of America. Um, blah, 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 blah. I will not be financially drained if um, I'm to support him, if I'm to take out money to support. I mean, those kind of things. It's a supporting letter. And then number six, you need a service fee receipt. Service fee receipt. The service fee is the student and exchange visitor information system. So you are paying service fee of about $350, right, to Homeland Security. So they are going to um, they are going to give you a receipt after you make payments. And usually if you're in Ghana, uh, it's very, very difficult to pay unless you know someone in the U.S. That is why I, I am trying to help people to be able to pay their service fee. So you can join my Telegram page and find out more information. Now, <clears throat> you need that as well. Take it to the interview. And number seven, you need your transcript from your school. Let's say you did a bachelor's or you did a master's and you're going to do a second master's or you're going to do your first master's. <clears throat> Sorry. You need a transcript showing all your academic prowess, how much you, I mean, yeah, the grades that you scored and all that. You need to show that in your transcript. Okay. Then, um, I remember that reminds me, someone asked one of the students who was going for the interview that what was the cause that you had problems with in your final year? And it took him just by surprise because how, I mean, why would I, why would I keep that in my mind? Or how, how on earth would I keep that at the back of my head? Like, okay, I didn't do well in this course. Yes, fine. Some people will remember, but most people won't because they are done and that's it. So uh, maybe you would want to also be conversant with the, the kind of courses that you did very well in and the ones you didn't do well in and what really struck your interest back in school. So that when you're talking about why you want to pursue that, you would say that, oh, maybe during my undergrad, I found deep interest in this particular course, maybe advanced microeconomics, and I want to explore and blah, 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 and you're good. Number eight is your degree certificate. So whether you attended KNUST, University of Legon, UEW, whatever school, UPSA, Central, whatever school that you attended, you are showing the degree certificate that you are certified as uh, an undergraduate student. So yeah, whether you are from Nigeria or Kenya, whatever degree, certificate you have show that at the interview then number nine is not so important but depends on your case and what you are trying to prove at the visa interview then you might need your letter of employment it's not it's not something that is is really necessary but depending on the case you are arguing you might need to show that you have been employed here and you are going to come back so that letter of employment showing that uh you are going you've been permitted to go to the u.s or you're allowed to go there so that you would gain more knowledge and come back to help your company. You might need that letter of employment. So the service fee that I spoke about, it doesn't necessarily need to be paid before you can book a visa, a visa appointment. Even after booking the, you can actually book the visa appointment without the service fee being paid. But prior, three days prior to your, your, your date, you should or you must have paid your service fee. Okay, so that's just like, and important for information, information, <laughs> for information, information. All right, FYI info. All right. So now let's talk about arrival checklist coming here. Now you've gotten the visa. The VO says congratulations. You are coming to America. You are happy like Eddie Murphy coming to America. And then you need to do certain things. You need to have certain things done. Number one, whilst you're in Ghana, whilst you're in Ghana, after you've gotten your visa, book a residence. Because you can't come here without having a place to stay. But that one thing. So <laughs> book a residence. Okay. Book a residence. And then usually now someone will be asking, how do you book it? You can find um you can find places on your school's website, hall residence or apartments. Or you can just go to Google Maps, right? Maps.google.com and then type in um apartments near maybe New York, okay, or apartments in New York, or just Google student apartments for rent in, then you mention the area of the town where you are going. You can do that too. And then uh, once you get there, either you pay 
you pay right before you board your flight or when you get there you make the payment and then you're able to lodge for the night or you can link up with people from your country who are already established over there and then they can help you out with accommodation you can also pitch for a while maybe one or two weeks to be able to find your feet and then uh, you thank them and, and leave to your new destination of course you, you you might want to you know show them some kindness yeah so number one when you get to campus visit your international students office because they have all the information about international students coming they are aware of your struggles and all that go there and tell them anything that you need and also ask them what is needful for you to do so number one international students office number two apply for a social security number is the most important thing in the u.s your social security number is the most important and it's free of charge you are not charged to apply it's it's, it's free so apply for that go to your federal office whichever place within the area where the the office is the federal building is and then apply for social security because without it you can't get a phone number you can't get a bank uh, address a, a, a bank account without you can do nothing you can't even work yeah so social security is like the most important thing and you have to handle that document with care no one should should know you shouldn't be telling your numbers to people it shouldn't be in the open you have to keep it safe it's like the most sacred thing here number three pay for a phone line it's usually about 30 to 40 dollars a month your phone line comes with unlimited data this is not ghana where your data is finished though this is not it, it, it's not like oh i'm trying to call someone on vodafone and i don't have credit i can only call mtn numbers it doesn't work that way you can call any number in the u.s and in canada for free and it's 30 to 40 depending on the network you go with either t-mobile i use t-mobile you can go with t-mobile verizon you can go with um mint and the other uh, the other ones to at and t and all that so there are other telecommunication networks that you can also uh pay for and then use unlimited internet unlimited calls to canada and us now uh number five so i said a phone line number four get a bank account a u.s bank account so if you are an assist uh, an assistant uh, in the department a research assistant teacher whatever assistant you are you'll be paid through your bank so you need to have a bank account either you are opening with wells fargo u.s bank chase or any other uh american bank out there okay um i, I have an account with u.s bank i'm going to open another one with chase so depends on what you want and then number five you need a us id because it will come to a point where you need to show a us id to do certain things um there are certain apps that if you don't show a us id you cannot use okay especially financial apps if you are interested in investing in uh, many other things like you want to generate passive income and you need an app to do certain things you need to show an id there are so many apps that are request for a US ID you can't use your passport you can't use Ghana card you have to use a US ID so that is where you might want to get your driver's license so use the school breaks to take your driving knowledge test I took it even in the course of school because I really needed to speed things up yeah I'm, I'm, I just feel like I want to do things at, at a fast pace so when I came here like less than two months I've done my driver's test I've gotten my license yeah so I'll talk about uh, getting a car in another video of mine all right so driver's license use school breaks spring break um, uh, uh, summer December holidays you can use all those times to take your knowledge test okay and get your your license that is there or, or if you don't want to do that you can get a state ID you can go to the federal office where you got your social security and tell them you want a state id or you go to the driver's license office tell them you want a state id and they're going to process it for you that is if you don't want to take the the driver's uh, knowledge test and then number six is a bonus try and get a car because here back in ghana where cars were luxuries here is a necessity it's like having a car is like uh, it's, it's as necessary as doing grocery shopping that's how it is because sometimes the weekends the bus will not work and i don't know it depends on your school but most schools on the weekends the bus doesn't work and maybe you want you want to go somewhere very urgently you can't because you don't have a car and you have to be patching with others but how long will you patch with others 
over time when you keep requesting rise it becomes burdensome because the person might you might be out of the schedule of the person and then he has to by force fix you in his schedule so you want to get a car holidays buses are not working school bus doesn't work you want to go somewhere you want to do something you have to submit a document you have to, you have to try and get a car and then uh, i'll talk about how to get a car and uh, places you can get them how to uh, do the deal and all that but all those ones will be in another video i don't want this to be too long so i've spoken about things you need for your visa interview and the things that you need uh, as arrival arrival checklist right the things that you, you need to get done when you get here right so that's just about it if you have any questions let me know in the comment section if you want one-on-one -on -one personal encounter send me a message on telegram the link is down below when you scroll you see the group link t.me for slash coming to america and that is uh our group link we're also doing a mock interview free mock interview on sunday so you want to join and have a feel of some of the questions and how to answer them when they are thrown at you then you can also join our free mock sessions okay so thank you for watching up until this point uh like the video and i'll see you in the next one bye